guys, my name is Ilona Mar. I play for the USA Rugby Sevens team, and you're watching the Women's Rugby Show. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Women's Rugby Show. I'm Sam, by the way, and welcome back to episode two of our One to Watch in 2022 series. In this episode, we'll be speaking to Loughborough Lightning star Eloise Hayward about her move to Loughborough, her time spent in rugby league, and much, much more. Before we get into our chat with Eloise, make sure you like this video, subscribe to us on YouTube, and check us out across all social medias. Have you done all that? Well, let's get into this video. So first of all, Eloise, thank you so much for joining us. First of all, have you had a good Christmas, a good New Year? Yeah, great Christmas, great New Year. Thank you. Yeah, so basically this is our one to watch for 2022 video series. Like I mentioned to you when I messaged you, you got a fair few nominations on the, when I put it on our Instagram story. So kind of wanting to learn a bit about the people who've been nominated for our one to watch, kind of about their career today and then what's going forward. So first of all, how did your rugby career kind of begin? How did your rugby career start? Um... Back when I was younger, my dad was the Navy rugby coach, uh, and I was just like this little three-year-old running on, uh, like running along the sideline. Um, I think he got a bit sick of me getting muddy and getting in the way of his sessions. So the physio um, and a few of the other like men's kids just kind of got us together and made us throw a ball around. And I think since then that was it. Um, joined an under five side, and then we moved abroad when I was younger. So we played uh, played in Oman, played in Dubai, um, Indonesia, and every country we moved to. I like just joined the new club um and then we got to England was about 15 um went to school here and I I lived up north so my closest club was West Park Leeds mm-hmm. um played a bit there played for Yorkshire uh, and then went to Hartbury College um played down there for two years played for Gloucester in the Prem when I was 18 uh, moved to Worcester Warriors for a little bit um and then went to Saracens for the last three, three seasons yeah. um Played uh, for England Sevens in the Euros, um, and then now at Loughborough Lightning. Um, <laughs> played for Leeds Rhinos this season as well in rugby league. Yeah. So bit of all over play Sevens <laughs> League Union. <laughs> so you mentioned your dad being the Navy coach. You have quite a sporting family, I believe. So is that kind yeah. of? Was, can you tell us a little bit about those kind of sporting family parents, etc.? And also, is that a bit of an inspiration for you? Yeah. So my mum was really big into netball. Um, she was, you know, always that that kind of side and always into her fitness and things like that. Dad was uh, an ex Hull FC like academy player, um, and he's always played league um, until he joined the Navy and he kind of tried Union um, and then went into coaching himself. Um, my granddad was a footballer for Man City, and then my great uncle was a, a Leeds Rhinos rugby player. So I kind of always had that option of you were definitely going to play a sport, whether it was rugby, football, netball. Um, but yeah, just kind of always looked up to them. And, you know, whenever there was family events or even just if we're going to the park on a family walk, there was always a ball of some kind there to kick about. So, yeah, I'd say my parents have always been quite a big inspiration to me. And so was your rugby inspiration a little bit league orientated growing up or was it more to the union side? Um, it was actually always seven because I uh, obviously played in Dubai, it's the, the home of Dubai Sevens. Um, that's all I played. So growing up, I never played 15s until I moved back to England. Um, so I've always kind of had that sevens player like mindset, that kind of sevens brain. And then I moved back to England and I was like, wow, there's a lot more players on the pitch here. Um, <laughs> and it was just kind of getting used to that. Um, so I've only technically played 15s for five years or so, whereas sevens was like my whole life. I see you mentioned Hartbury College. Um, how did you enjoy your time there? And was it for, was it, was it A-level you were there for? Well, yeah, so I did it. My, I did my A-levels. I did a maths, uh, maths biology, and chemistry A-level. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't make my own life easy, to be honest. <laughs> um, yeah, and it was, it was just great. Like, constantly training from the age of 16 as, like, a full-time athlete. It was, it's a kind of experience you can't, you can't replicate anywhere else. So I was doing my A-levels. I was training full-time every day. And then you got to live with your best friends at the same time. Um, mm-hmm. So it was it was a really good experience and I really enjoyed it. I think that kind of projected me onto my my rugby career. Mm. It seems like if you look through the Premier 15s, at least five or six people from a Premier 15s match day squad will have been to Hartbury at some point mm-hmm. in their career. Who was at Hartbury when you were there? Um, Ellie Kildan, Abby Burton, Fiona McIntosh. So like I shared a room with Ellie for, for a year and that. So mm. all the trouble we got up to. <laughs> and obviously you played for, you said meant you played for Gloucester and Worcester, but then you moved to Saracens and a Premier 15s win while you were at Saracens. Um, how was that for kind of playing at a young age and winning the Premier 15s? 
yeah so it was really cool um kind of coming into Saris at first there was obviously there was not this uh this I don't even know how to explain it like around the club it's like this is Saracens you know they're a big team and I kind of joined them at, at 18 and thought wow like this is a side I want to be a part of you know they're a winning side they're a really good side I want to make kind of I thought I can make my name in this team um so joining them was was a great learning experience for me um went there and really progressed um over the, la the last three seasons and and I think winning winning trophies and winning medals is something every player aspires to do but when it's actually in front of you and you're on these big occasions you know it's it's a, a experience that you just never want to forget how did that move to Saracens come about when you were 18 um so Rob Kane and Jack Baird at the time they were um in my kind of like pathway rugby career so when when I was younger it was like uh you'd go county and then you'd go divisional rugby um, which was like southeast, southwest, north, and that sort of stuff. And they were the southeast coaches, um, and they kind of spoke to me a little bit back then and watched me a little bit. Um, and then when I went up into like the England under eighteen sort of pathway, they'd kind of see. And then I played against them for Worcester, my first kind of prem game for Worcester. And I spoke to them at the warm up. They're like, "Oh, are you all right? Like, get a bit of a catch up." And then I just had regular conversations with Rob over the rest of my like season. And he said, "Oh, you know what? What are you think about coming down?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'd actually really like that." Um, so just went down for a few preseason sessions and thought, yeah, this is somewhere I want to be. Um, and then he went to America and Alex came in. So I was like, all right, see you later, Rob. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's literally how it came about. Um, it was just knowing a coach from a young age and them saying, you know, would you like to have a shot? Let's come. And it was that simple. England sevens, how was that um, representing your country? That was unreal. That is an experience that I just want to relive again and again and again. Um, we went to the Ukraine, um, which was really cool. Um, I remember being on the plane and uh, we, I can't even remember what airline, it was like some Russian airline. So no, none of the hostesses really spoke English. The tannoy was all in Russian. And we were sat, I sat next to this, this Russian man and the tannoy came across and his face looked a bit, um, like a bit worried. And I, was, I remember looking at him being like, you can? He was like, oh, do you want me to translate? And I was like, yeah, I'd love to. And he was like, uh, they said where well, we're landing in the Ukraine right now is a red war zone. <laughs> I was like, get off this plane, like text mum, like I love you. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, it was it, it was an unreal experience and something that I would I would love to do again. Like mm -hmm. representing your country is one thing, but playing a sport, playing sevens for me is is another thing. Like it's just a sport I love. Yeah, and as you mentioned, Ryan Lee's Rhinos moved to these Rhinos in playing for them in the summer. How did that happen? Obviously, because I saw it when he was tweet. I was like. I was a little bit surprised. I didn't realise you would be coming back to Union as well. So I, was, I thought you'd gone from Union. So I was like, how did that come about in, over the summer? Yeah, loads of people thought that I was gone. They thought that was my Union career over. And they were like, oh, she's just gone to league now. Um, it was literally as simple as I knew a couple of the girls from Union. So I knew like uh, Orla McCallion and Sam Hume from when I was younger and Zoe Hornby. And they just kind of were like joking with me. They said, oh, like you'd really like league, like just come try it. And I thought, oh, yeah, yeah, all right. Um, and then I just like shot the coach a message and said, you know, this is like a little summer adventure. I think I'd like to try, just, you know, see what's going on. Um, and she said, yeah, yeah, come along to a bit of our, bit of our sessions. We'll, we'll see what, how you fit in. And um, it was kind of like a trial block. You know, she was like, you know, let's just see how you do. And then you meant to do your trial block about four weeks. You cut it short two weeks in and said, that's it. We'd like you in the squad. And I said, oh, all right. But I was a bit shocked by that. And then um, played all summer for them um you know got all the way to the grand final um I mean I, well, I got into the semi-final but you know it was great to watch the girls in the grand final and again having a season where I've been to a prem final and a grand final I just thought wow like this is a decent season <laughs> and then Loughborough you obviously at Loughborough Lightning now um moving from Saracen so first of all how did that come about and how have you enjoyed your time at Loughborough so far yeah I really enjoyed it um well I just thought I'd, I'd kind of finished my degree down south um and I, I'd kind of gone home for a bit see my parents and just enjoyed being back up in the north um and then I, I thought right well I'm just gonna have a little look and obviously there's not really many clubs up north but unless you go far far up north and in that sense um and I've known Reese for, for ages and he kind of I had a conversation with him he had a conversation with me and he was just like you know we do see you fitting in here um so I came down pre-season again tried it out love the club you know the girls are just so welcoming so amazing um and that was that like the facilities are next to none um and I think you know it's a really good opportunity for my career to even hit that next level um and prosper even more 
um and yeah I've just thoroughly enjoyed it I've obviously unfortunately been injured for the last three months but it's kind of not really down for my spirits because you're still in gym with everybody you're still going to training sessions you're still spending time in the club room with everyone so it's it's as if I've still been playing just not actually um and then obviously recently been number one water girl since I'll be back to running <laughs> are you at Loughborough the actual university you're doing a degree yeah I'm doing my second degree um god knows why sometimes I do wonder nothing but, about uh, that <laughs> yeah I thought I'd just stick to education while I'm still playing yeah and so how do you manage kind of balancing the time between your degree and playing rugby um thankfully Loughborough's actually got that all kind of sorted so we train uh, Monday Tuesday Thursday two till about eight ish um and my lectures I'm lucky enough that my lectures are thankfully kind of slot around then but if not then my lectures are really kind of understanding or shooting me and I'll be like look I've got this going on I can't come to a lecture but it'll be recorded or it'll be on teams or things like that so then in that little breaks that we've got in between sessions I can kind of go on my computer watch start watching the session or come home at night watch the lecture that I've missed kind of and it's quite good to keep up with it um and the lectures here are so understanding they are just really like if you if you if you communicate with them then they're really happy for it but if you're a student who's kind of like oh I didn't go and then you haven't shot an email they'll probably will be quite angry with you mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you going to be playing any books rugby now you're back from injury or is that kind of focusing on Loughborough at Lightning? Yeah, mainly focusing on Lightning. Um, I mean, Bucks rugby is always fun and I would love to, but I think playing on a Wednesday and playing on a Saturday might be pushing it a little bit. Um, but I think hopefully in the break when we've got that, that international break and we want to keep that match fitness up, then I'll be playing in the Bucks, which would be good. Hopefully get to a Bucks final this year. And how have you... Um, cope with obviously your recovery from injury got quite a long time out um, for a young player so how have you coped with that recovery and do you feel ready to ready and raring to go now yeah I've literally just spent like every day being so methodical with things like doing my rehab and um, like game reading all the time and just kind of asking questions and being like oh can I progress this can I do this I think I've annoyed the physio that I've really really kind of asked too many questions every day going oh but I could do this and she's going just sit down <laughs> um so I think yeah at first for like a player who's quite a bouncy person anyway it was really tough to just kind of be like no you're sitting still um but it's given me a lot of time to do analysis and like I've always been kept involved by the team it was like you know if I couldn't run around it was oh Ello could you do the the review could you do this you know or it was just always kind of giving me tasks to do to keep me involved which is really good um and then I've just kind of managed myself by making sure I just stayed social with everybody and kind of not not kind of lock myself away and and just really got on my rehab and my gym and I think at first you know you're a bit upset by it and you have days where you think oh this is the worst but then you've got your mate you know literally in the gym with you saying no it's all right you'll be back before you know it and and you are and and there's always things to do and even the S&C staff are great you know they're always giving you sessions to to keep you going so I've not come back and felt like oh I'm unfit or anything I've just come back and been like yep let's go. You were on commentary for one of the live stream games as well weren't you? (laughs) that was cool they uh they thought let's give the most talkative player a microphone and see what happens um I actually thoroughly enjoyed it I really enjoyed being on comms um whether the boy whether Sam who's doing the comms with me enjoyed it as much I don't know but <laughs> just spent my life making comments towards him <laughs> and um just a slightly random question but do you model your kind of scrum half game your rugby game on anybody in the current in the current rugby game um probably Anton Dupont like I love the way the French play I love how random and sporadic they are but then I just can't help but whenever I watch him play I think where's he going what's he doing and at first when I first started watching him a couple of six nations ago I thought he's random and I watch him I think oh I get why he's done that oh I see why he's done that and like that's the kind of player I'd love to be is that that defensive threat um you know so defenses are constantly going where's she going and having a bite on you but then the second that they think you're passing you're, you can kind of slip through I think he's quite a slippery player um so yeah big big fan of Anton Dupont or um Aaron Smith as well I quite like I quite like the the Southern Hemisphere like the style of play the Super 15s that kind of rugby yeah I think it's safe to say one you're one of the most talkative scrum halves in the Premier 15s as well is that <laughs> is it that kind of communication level something that's important to your game yeah I think um yeah I think it is I think the the way that players you know who play with me I think they like the fact that I kind of stand behind them I constantly give them that commentary of you know I I want you at guard I want you here no you don't need to fold you don't need to go there so it takes kind of a weight off their shoulders they're not having to do that extra thinking they're just listening and doing and they you know I've had a lot of players say to me before you know that's actually really helpful 
um I mean some blows don't appreciate it when we're really under the pump and I'm like make your heads <laughs> and they're like yeah I know <laughs> but um yeah I I think it's it's quite a, a key part of my game um and quite a key part of the player I am yeah as much as it annoys the refs as well at times <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think we've all seen that video. <laughs> <laughs> and just quickly away from the pitch, obviously you're a loose heads ambassador. How important is that for you to kind of give back and have that extra element of your rugby career? Massively. Um, I think like, you know, Rob and, and the rest of the Loose Heads Foundation try and get across all the time that, it, you know, we're trying to break that stigma and that it is okay to not be okay. And I think we play such a, uh, such a, a macho sport in the sense of people think that they don't really want to talk they don't they can't say to their mate oh I'm, I'm having a bit of a struggle at the moment I'm you know I'm having issues here I'm having issues there um we're just trying to break that down so that it's 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 completely okay and it's understandable that not every player is going to be okay all the time and it might even be a I've just had a bad day but I need to talk to my mate about it or you know but it could be on the other spectrum of I've had a really, really tough month. I've had, it's been like this for months. Um, and just, I think it's it's so important because I just want to get that out there. And I want people to understand that it is honestly okay to be struggling. And, and if you don't feel like you have an outlet, that loose heads is an outlet for you to, to kind of approach. Mm-hmm. So kind of go back onto what this video is all about, the being a one to watch for the year. So what are your aspirations for 2022? Oh, um be the best player I can be. I think coming back from injury, there's always that that worry around yourself of, am I going to be the player I was? Am I going to be a completely different player? Where am I going to sit at? Um, but I want to come back and hit the ground running and be an even better player than I was last year. Like that's that's kind of always my goal coming into a season is just be better than the nine I was last year. Um, whether that comes with a call into England 15s, England 7s, great, amazing. Um, but at the moment, just completely focusing on my premiership and being the best player I can be every game and, and trying to you know dominate in the prem. Will you be going back to league in the summer? Or is that uh, yeah. decided? Hopefully. Yeah. I mean, hopefully. Uh, it's just trying to get all the timings right because when the league season starts, the prem ends and it's finding that, that happy medium of having a, a slight rest or actually having a holiday. But uh, yeah, I think I loved league too much to not go back. <laughs> and then say, for finally... Say if I spoke to you again in five years' time, where would you mm. want your rugby career to be? Uh, I want to. I want to be speaking to you with a couple more trophies, a couple more, more medals. Whether that's Prem <laughs> Fifteens medals, whether that's World Cup medals, World Series medals, um, yeah, or or even rugby league medals. You know, I'd love to be sitting here saying, you know, I've achieved everything I've, I've wanted to. You know, over my last five years, I've become the best player I can be. You know, I probably still tell you that I've got more to learn. I'm never, never quite happy with, <laughs> with the player that I fully am. But I think I'd love to sit here saying, you know, I've got a contract for this. I've got a contract for that. Um, I've, I've just achieved, 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 um, and happily achieved. You know, I don't want to sit there going, oh yeah, I've got these trophies, but not be a happy rugby player. I want to sit there and go, oh, I'm buzzing. I've got this trophy. I've done this. I've achieved this, and have like so many stories to tell you. Brilliant. So. Um, first of all, best of luck for this year and best of luck for your first love for game when you're finally back. Obviously, no game this weekend. Um, so, yeah, best of luck for this year and thank you so much for chatting to us. Thank you very much.